Good morning. You're watching Morning at NT. Time to take note. And earlier on, I hinted that you might be a startup or you just have an idea that you want to make into something big. You think you have the next big thing in the country. Or you're running a business or have a big organization. And the issue is money. You will probably need funding to start the business. Or you need access to finance to help a certain patch of your business or organization that is just not moving. And you're thinking, is it bank loans? Should I go into a casaco? Should I follow around my friends here and there? What do I do? And how do I make myself worthy of this investment? That's what we're talking about, attracting investors or even funding. Joining me is uh, someone who has been around businesses and strategies, a lawyer and an author, Matsiko Godwin Mohezi. Good morning. Good morning, Flavia. Dress like a lawyer. You guys never dress down. <laughs> we had to own a show. So <laughs> That's a there. good thing. Thank yeah. you. Yes. yes. So um, when we're talking about attracting funding or investment, because when they ask a lot of people why they're not entrepreneurial in this country. We don't have money. We don't have capital to start a business. Yeah. There's that lagging there. But then you asked, if we had money, do you have the idea? Do you have the business? And many people would not know how to actually put it down on paper yeah, to, to say from my head to paper. W what do you think happens between there? Uh, and, and interestingly, you find that Uganda has a lot of entrepreneurial ideas coming up. We ranked about 56%. So the ideas are there, but for the many startups that come in this country, yeah. they don't see the first or second year. Yes. And so it's not that we don't have the ideas, it's that space of everyone is thinking in one place, if I have an idea, let me go for a loan. If I have an idea, who is that big funder? Yes. So I think it's for people to strip it down and say, wait a minute. There's already finance around me that I can work with. You mm. can bootstrap and, you know, start with money that you already have. Your savings. Yes, mm -hmm. your savings. You start with family and friends because, you see, with these kinds of startups, people are not necessarily investing in your idea at the okay. start of it. They are looking at you as a person. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it, it's harder to convince people that you've just met or haven't met yet <laughs> yes. than people around you who, who say know this, you. Yeah, this person mm -hmm. has integrity. This person is ambitious. Let's give them a chance. I think if people could start with the people around them mm. and uh, the people they've worked with. I mean, for example, if you're here at NTV. Mm. My and colleagues. And your colleagues, and you know, you have a business that you think, oh, I can add value to this and this in your life. I'm bringing something in the office mm. or shirts or something. I mean, I have to change clothes every day. It would be easier to start it with the people around you yeah. before you think of scaling. So if we do not exist the finance that we have around us, it might be even harder for us to look at the bigger picture because the stakes are higher than you have mm -hmm. procurement processes for some of these big uh, investors. So it becomes a bit of a trick. I think for most people, you want to start with the funding that is around you. But also to, to your point, I think even how we organize ourselves, okay. you know, you have an idea, but can you scale it? Can you pitch it to someone? Can you uh, add value to a product? Can you think of what are you changing? You know, and this is not just five sentences of, <laughs> this is what I want. Yes. <laughs> this is what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, so you, you find that someone will come up with an idea and rush for the money. Mm -hmm. You have not sat down to break it down into, okay, mm -hmm. what kind of team do I need? What kind of uh, skills do I need? I mean, I might be good at applications yes. and I can program something, but that doesn't mean that I can do the business side of things. That's true. So it is important to look even... Among the people that you know, I could have an accountant who is a friend mm -hmm. and I'm starting a business and I tell them, you just give me a financial model of uh, the thing that I'm trying to do yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And rather than trying to crunch numbers and say, if I <laughs> sell bread, I'll make money. Get yes. an accountant to tell you, you know, in this market, there are about 50,000 people. Why don't you start with cookies? Because they're packing stuff for their children in the mm -hmm. morning. And then if you're selling at this rate, you're going to get this kind of money. So how we program our businesses and... Let's be open-minded. It's not my thing. <laughs> I don't want to tell you my idea. Yeah, my idea. It's yes. so big. Well, just give me the money. No, <laughs> be true. open to advice that mm. people might give you and attract the sorts of skills that can help your uh, business become better. Mm. I hear you saying being resourceful that if yeah. you know what you want, you might know your idea, but you're not the be-all and end-all. So yes. you might be very strong in numbers, but you're yeah. not very strong in something else. Even pitching entails talking to people. Some people don't have that as a strong suit. Man, some people will, <laughs> will start talking and they just, they are resigned in the sense that if you only just give me the money and I left this place. Yes. And yet the person you're pitching to has a thousand and one questions. Mm -hmm. Is this person a crook? Is this a Ponzi scheme? Are they going to run away with my money? So sometimes you want people who are really good at this. Yeah. You have the idea, but they can do the business proposal. They can do the talking. And also you find that with pitching, 
it's more of people talking to, uh, listening to people they know. Mm -hmm. It's like in our field, sometimes you want a lawyer who will have rapport with a judge. Yes. And so investors will look at, this is a young man. What does he have to tell me? Mm -hmm. What does he know about what this business? So you might have to find someone who they can listen to, yeah. sell them your business. Once they have bought into you, they'll know how to pitch it to the person you're trying to meet. And some of these people don't have as much time. So you're not going to sit down someone for two hours to tell them, an idea of how you want to sell airtime scratch cards, mm -hmm. if they will still be available. <laughs> no. So you want to yeah. have segments of, I can do a PowerPoint, I can break it down to mm -hmm. this and sort of person. If it's a person of numbers, if that's what they're interested in, this is what I'll give them. If they're interested in the human resource side of it, I can break it down for the different sorts of people I'm approaching. And so yeah, it's interesting for you to, to see how your business translates into your investors' interests. See, let me ask about that, because yeah. if, if Masiko has money and I have a great idea and I have put it down on paper, PowerPoint, whatever, and I come to him and he says, I can give you money if you can tweak here and there, mm -hmm. if you can change this and this. Why? Because for you at the time, maybe your catalog of investments it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Or maybe the way you're thinking of your perspectives in the future, you're saying, it's a young man with this potential. Just remove all that and change it to this. Yes. Some people are timid that because maybe I think Godwin has been doing this for years, I'll... I just change what I'm doing yes. for, for them. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, we have to be strong and bold about refining our focus. Mm. You have to focus your energies that if you come to an investor, let it be maybe the only gap remaining. Because okay. if your idea is not refined enough, you'll have all sorts of people feeding in what they think, the direction they think mm -hmm. it will go. And yet when you conceptualize it, you're looking at this is the gap in the market that I can tap into. This is the niche that I have. Mm -hmm. And so if that's not refined enough, you'll have people who should be giving you the money, changing your idea. And mm -hmm. before long, you'll find you in a saturated environment and you're not even doing anything better than the people already there. So you want to focus your energies on building your product the best way you think it is so that when a financier comes in, it's the only thing you want from them. But isn't there an advantage to them tweaking things if it helps for me to make a profit at any point? Maybe there's something I've not seen that they have seen with their experience. I think the advantage I see with that is that when you talk to people who have been there, mm. they know the market, they know the environment, they know yeah. what they'll be willing to invest in. Okay. So you take it under advisement, I would say. You don't necessarily change, change everything yeah. you have. You want to go back to the drawing board and say, I have had this and this. Or maybe I need a different investor. Maybe these are not the right fit for my idea. Mm -hmm. But if what they're saying makes sense or adds value, then absolutely I think you can add it to what you're already doing and yeah. get the money. SMEs, yes. biggest we have in this country. Everyone <laughs> has something they yes. are doing. Yes. And scaling, you've hinted on it so much in this conversation so far. And someone sits there and just thinks they can scale because four customers came in today more than the usual number and they just don't know how to and they think maybe scaling means more money yeah let me go get someone to put in more money now you are stuck with someone's money you can't give them back <laughs> their yeah. money yeah or you've taken a loan whatever it is talk to uh, about SMEs and where that can be a challenge yes I think a lot of what we have in this country is the laziness in entrepreneurship. <laughs> you <laughs> okay. will see someone starting a fashion house and you say, there's money in selling dresses. Mm. Let me so go and do so that. So and so has done it. Yes. And they did one shop. I think I can do two. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think, and that's not even the biggest part of our market. I mean, when you look at agriculture, when you look at tourism and, and transport, we have more opportunities in the untapped potentials of our natural resources than in what everyone is trying to do around yeah. Kampala. So food. Yes, you know food. <laughs> so you find that if you're trying to get into a business which already has 10,000 people on your street, mm. chances are that putting in more money won't get you the more customers because they're the very same people anyway. They're the same people consuming the product. So when you're looking at scaling, you want to look at how am I getting into new customers? Okay. Or if maybe I can package better, mm -hmm. or maybe if I can make it cheaper, not necessarily more outlets. Uh, yes. I mean, you've seen what happened with things like Nakumat. Mm. You come on an aggressive mission and you're opening branches all over Everywhere, the country. Yeah. But the idea is that Ugandans are not yet into the supermarket mm. shopping thing. We mm. still have our groceries, we still like Mama. But because one branch got too much traffic. Got too much traffic <laughs> and you're like, there's no branch in Barara. I have to run <laughs> yes. to Barara. So unless you're really looking at uh, a market that is new and tapped mm. or you can make the product different, 
you will always have the same consumers for the same things. You look at the hangout places in the in town. You will open it up and it will flood for the first few weeks or oh so. Oh yes. But people want the and new thing. And when they go, they go. They go. <laughs> but you've put in money or perhaps you've borrowed. Mm. And so for those kinds of businesses, and I'm not saying that if you're steady, you won't make the money. Mm. I think you shouldn't be aggressive in scaling. Mm. You want to build systematically. And to, to your point of borrowing money for some of those things, I think you want uh, to use as less debt as possible for some of those businesses. So that if an investor comes in, they're perhaps just funding the expansion. And that's the only thing you have to worry about, but not your core business. And so, I and even with some of these angel fun funders, you find that they have equity options. So it's not necessarily that they want debt from you. So why mm -hmm. run, run to a bank for a debt if someone can give you money mm -hmm. and become a part owner? And yes. then you think together and they can cover some of the risk. Because some of these angel funders mm -hmm. are interested in high risk, but they want the growth. Yes. So for as long as it gives them the footprint, that's fine with them. And you want more of those than those. You go do the business, bring money. Bring my money. <laughs> let, yeah. me, let me ask about things like budgets. Because numbers are very important in business. Yes. But with our SMEs, not everybody tracks their numbers. Yeah. They track the numbers that you know, suit them for the moment or what they can just check. But nobody really breaks down yeah. their yeah. budgets. Yeah. So <laughs> you, I mean, I think business has a mind of its own. Mm. And so you'll have on paper or in your head what you think it can be. Mm. But if you're not looking at the numbers and what that translates as on the ground and customer behavior and consumer mm. patterns, that might come to bite you. I'll just do my sales. My yes, I'll just do my sales. And <laughs> so the money comes yeah. in, I can buy myself a beer tonight. Uh, there was a bridal shower the other I side. I can pay the rent. I can pay the rent then I'm tomorrow. Good. What happens next? So being able to isolate the monies that you allocate to the business and how they come in and how you reinvest. I think you want to treat business with that sort of integrity, mm -hmm. that it has a mind of its own, that it has its own patterns. Because you see with these social media changes happening in the country, mm. today they slap a tax on social media and your customers were all on Instagram. And, yeah, huh. You've been selling everything online. And now they cannot see your product. Yeah. Are you going to pay taxes for all of them? Maybe <laughs> of not. not. So you, you want to look at it in that way. So what happens? How do you adjust to some of these mm. changes that are not uh, part of, that you, you cannot control? So try to separate your money from the money you're putting in the business and monitor the numbers of the business on their own, outside your own personal income. I mean, mm. your salary doesn't necessarily mean that it's the money you have for the business. Yeah. Do, you, do you bring in an investor based on your potential or based on your lack of funding? Uh, I think you want to bring, it, it is both, I mean, you have a potential that's not funded. Okay. So an investor comes in on that uh, point. But investors have their own interests. Yeah, the, anyone with their money will yes. have interest. No one is just <laughs> looking to throw their money <laughs> yes. away. Mm. So more importantly is how does my business fit into the strategic plan mm. of this investor? How does my business model or what I'm selling mm. add value to this person? Why should they spend additional money on me anyway. Yes. So you want to look at the value you add. Mm -hmm. And if it's a service, if it's a product, do they need it? Are you creating a product looking for, a, uh, are you creating a solution looking for a problem? Or you can actually identify a problem. So being that innovative to study your, uh, your investor, to know what they would really want to put their money into, and maybe show them, you know you have money lying around, but I can make it better for you. So some people say, okay, rather than keep it on my account, if I invest it with you, after some time, I'll this have... This is what I'll get. Yes. Mm, does that answer how we select our potential investors? For us, I think you mentioned in there yeah. whether their interests match yeah. your idea or business or organization, uh, which most cases doesn't, most cases align, especially yes. if they're investors who've invested elsewhere. Yes. They have their catalog and they know that me, I invest in education. So if yours Correct. is outside of education, there must be something. Yes. So what kind of knowledge do you need to equip yourself with when you're picking investors? If you have the luxury of the w being the one to actually pick who you're pitching to. Yes, that, that can be a challenge when you have investors who have already sold out to something that you're not in. Mm. It doesn't mean that, okay, let me, let me go to education because that's where they're investing. I think uh, you want to believe that people are open-minded. Mm -hmm. You want to believe that you're investing in education, but there's also a space here. So how do you uh, generate conversations around getting the investors to diversify? I'm speaking this on the premise that the person you want th that has the money is not on your side. And so you want to get them to your side of yes. the business. And the interesting thing is that you'll find that even if they cannot, they might know someone who would. 
So what you want is an environment where they can listen you out. So don't come and say, I know you don't invest in education, but <laughs> you see I have this. Yes. No, try mm. to bring it in a way that, you know, there is this uh, sort of space or ICT mm -hmm. that I think has a potential. I know you invest in education, but what would be your thoughts on this since you're already an investor anyway, so at least you know something about investment. Mm -hmm. And as those conversations build, you'll find that that's maybe just a door to someone who's into ICT, who's into those sorts of innovation. So I think you don't want to close yourself off because you uh, stereotype an investor from the get-go. You want to yeah. have conversations around how that might go as well. But even money, I feel like if I have my boutique and it's actually not, doesn't have um, infrastructure, it's just online, for yeah. example. I have my few bags of clothes there in my car, so whoever says deliver, I deliver. I deliver. It's small, meaning even the capital I probably invested is small. Yes. Uh, th there must be, uh, if I want someone to invest to scale it, I don't want to look for someone who owns buildings in town. In, yeah. Do you see what I mean? So do, do you pick an investor also based on how much you are looking for? Yeah. So you don't go to like someone like Patrick Bitter today when you're, want to when you're looking for 500,000. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> he would have it. He would give it to but you. But in, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you're right to that. Like um, you, you find that you have to know you, the investors you need for your <laughs> yeah. kind of business. I mean, Flavia might have five million to keep in my boutique. So mm -hmm. why do I have to go to Bitaturi? And Flavia understands boutique. Yeah. I mean, if you have, for example, a business of saloon, mm -hmm. and uh, it's still trying to do a certain type of weave, mm -hmm. there is already a market for that. And uh, there are people who will understand that, and there are people who know the risk and say, if I give you my 500,000, I know you'll have five clients in a week, and you can bring it back. Mm -hmm. So looking, I think also studying the kind of environment of investors, for the, ca the business that you're going, you're in, going yeah. into would really help a great deal. And again, sometimes it's not really looking for the big investors. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like you say, you have a boutique and you're selling online. It can be word of mouth. So you, have, you find that you're selling in a hostel, certain products, mm. and you're looking for investors when all you need is your customer to tell another person yes. or their roommate that you know those pumps that I got. There's another person who has them. Yes. And so have you exhausted the options of how you can get the funding? So mm. maybe if you get it offline and have an outlet near the hostel or mm. closer to the population or the target market, it might save you having to bring in another person who just puts in the money and you have to hustle with uh, working on the product yourself. There's, there's a thing, um, not calling it being unfair, but we've yeah. all heard when you are pitching your company, organization, your idea, and you not omit, but you forget to give certain information. <laughs> and the investor is excited, and they invest, and halfway, they're like, oh, wait. And this is maybe some things that they can't even do uh, due diligence on, mm, Yes, you know? So uh, maybe it's a, my advantage to hide a few things about my organization. You have selective amnesia <laughs> yes. in that moment. When you're pitching, pitch. you say, I, yeah. I don't remember this one. Uh, I wouldn't go that way. I <laughs> think you want to be with the integrity from the start. Mm. It's better to be open and someone says no. Is there integrity in business? Uh, it's money. <laughs> I think money, w when you're looking at business, you're looking at sustainability. Mm -hmm. I think when you're selective in the information you give, unless it's of course about need to know basis that mm -hmm. also has its place, uh, you will get the money, but it won't take long. If, if, if my, my business, uh, we made losses and you can, when you look at the track record, you yeah. can see there's a year we really, yes. you know, went yeah. bad. And maybe that year I had decided to give my boyfriend money. He, he borrowed it, didn't bring back, and it was a family dispute. We moved on. I somehow picked up. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that. So you know, there are little details that I feel like you really shouldn't share. <laughs> the question I would ask there Then there are family businesses, you know, yes. where the father has taken the money, the mm -hmm. mother has taken the money, the son is fighting to keep the business going. And yeah. you can't mention that someone has been picking. Yes. The question there is, is it relevant to the pitch you're making? Hmm. Sometimes it might not be. So I, I wouldn't have a problem with... I mean, you don't have to throw... You see, yesterday I ate this breakfast. <laughs> <but there are laughs> yes, the to I the think You want to be relevant to the investor you're uh, mm. pitching to. You want to know what they need to know. Mm. But uh, the key thing is that you don't omit something that is vital okay. for them. Okay. If it would change their mind about investing with you... But those are patterns, Godwin. Yes. Those are patterns. It yes. means I don't know how to handle my... I don't know how to separate, yes. for example, my family from, from my, my business. business. And you're going to give me money, and eventually someone is going to come... And, and pull it. from the yes. medulla and yes. say, you add it. Yes, it's a habit. Yeah, so yeah, that's sort of, I think, 
you really have to make that distinction mm. uh, if you want to study how your business is moving. I think you really have to separate it from the other things that you do, your family, and they have to be clear. You know, when you don't project risk from the start, you don't know how to handle it. Mm. So it's best for you to project this risk and even put out a treatment strategy and say, you know, if this means that I don't do my shop where I stay, <laughs> I'd rather partner with someone somewhere else. Mm. Or if it means that I don't have my wife in my business because she doesn't know which sugar is for selling and which, which one is for eating. Yes. Yeah, you, I think you don't want to, uh, uh, to omit vital information, mm. but also you want to project the risk from the start. Mm. And of, uh, if so because you can raise it to the investor and say, this and this has happened, mm -hmm. but it's a lesson learned. This yes. is how we've moved on from it. Mm. And I don't see it recurring. But even if it does, these are the treatment strategies we have for it. So hiding information <laughs> will really get you the money. Yeah. Knowledge. I think that's something yes. I probably won't talk about. Because we've spoken about things here and someone is probably years into their business and saying, oh, I really didn't. I wish I knew that. Yeah. Um, how important is it for people to, even if your business is still going, because this is something you might not remember yes. to do, to just equip yourself with information. Where do you get such information anyway? I think we're in a time, interesting time, when the information is all over the place. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get into a business, you want to know what that business is. Yeah. You want to know who the people are. You want, you, I mean, you want to do tourism and you don't know who Andrew Wekesa is. I mean, <laughs> Amos, Chas Wek Amos Wekesa yes. is in this country. And because with that, then you know what's their story. Mm. What haven't they done? Because maybe at their level, they are targeting Bazungu. But there's so many students with geography trips. And all I need to do is tell the school, I can take your students for this, so I hire my coaster. That's still tourism. Yes. It's domestic. Maybe every, they can pay throughout there, and everyone is being charged 100,000. Mm. And how many schools do we have here? Geography is a compulsory subject at some level. Mm. So you find that it's tourism. Wekesa has done it, but he's in his bazungu. I am going to take the students, mm. and I'll take them to the places that are examinable. So knowing the environment, knowing what you're going into the sector and mm. the challenges there. I mean, everyone wants to buy Boda Boda. Everyone wants to buy a taxi. But what does it mean to be in that business? Because you have someone big in this government who has a thousand Boda Bodas. And you're competing with them with your one Boda Boda. And you're competing with them. But also, you, I, I've noticed some of the Boda Boda people have their thrones. So you find this is our place. You don't just come and mm, put your yes, bike there. Yes, it's staged, by the way. Yeah, you yes. can't. So if you get a customer friend, it will be a challenge. So what's the politics in that business mm. you get? So you find that, and you see, you can see Uganda, for example, has a lot of potential in agriculture. But it's sort of like a cartel of some of these big exporting things. So you say, I'm going to go and start my maze. Mm. You do your maze and you're stuck with it. The point is, who are these big players? And are you better off joining them? Or saying, let me start my tomatoes, then once they get out of the garden, I'm sure there are many hotels in Kampala. Are you sure there are no people supplying those hotels already? <laughs> exactly. So you're stuck with the product mm -hmm. at the end of the chain. And sometimes you want to just focus on a little bit of the value chain. You say, okay, let me just buy from the farmers rather than try to grow and the season is bad and then I didn't know what pesticide to use and then I didn't know whether I should have used You don't nuts. have to be in the entire value chain, supply chain. Yes. You can just be in one. Find one that you're good at. Maybe <laughs> yes. you're good at marketing. Mm -hmm. Find a way of marketing from one person to the end user. And that might be your thing. You don't have to say, I'll grow, then I'll do this, I'll do this. You look at, for example, coffee. The statistics always say coffee, 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 Uganda. But do we really know what this means for mm -hmm. us? And a lot of the farmers involved are not seeing the value. Yeah. Because they are a place where the money is not happening mm -hmm. for them. And we are telling them, get into this business, get into this coffee, but the money is not happening. I think that also comes to the government in doing more sensitizations on mm -hmm. uh, this. Because we have a very unemployed, a very big unemployed youth population. Yes. And so these are the people who have the energy to get into these small enterprise businesses, the startups. And also innovative, so they can create yes. something yes. different. Yes, but what support are we giving them? How do we help them understand the terrain? How do we help them add value? So because we want them to be in a place where they can compete internationally. We want to be in a place where we can have Ugandan products replace these uh, heavy imports that are increasing our taxes even on mangoes and mobile money. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Know your potential, know your numbers is yes. quite important. If you have a strength in your idea, your business, maybe for you you're great at marketing and that is it. It doesn't hurt. As you say, don't go very far. Your family members, your friends, uh, you could have Godwin as a lawyer. He could help you with the paperwork because some yeah. of you are signing your life away and you don't even know that because ah, he's an investor. He has money and I need the money. 
now. So think carefully through everything and make your business investor worthy as well. Or just look around you for money. You don't have to go to the big banks for loans. You can find something within your space. It's morning at NTV. Have a good day. Morning at N.